us pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we love you. We thank you for being God all by yourself. Uh, Father, right now, I stand an imperfect man. And Lord, I pray that you use me in a perfect way as only you can. Take my mind and think with it. Take my mouth and speak with it. To the end that we will be strengthened and encouraged for this journey. Ultimately knowing that all that's done today is for our good. And Father, you should and you shall receive all of the glory. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, and make me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. For it's in your son Jesus' name, uh, my Christ, our Christ, the Christ, and all of God's children all together say amen. I ask you would all repeat after me. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. And if I might, I would like to just call to your attention our text for today in continuation of the book of beginnings, Genesis. And then last time I preached, we left off at coming from Genesis, the 29th chapter, and we left off with the 30th verse. Amen. And today we will continue and we will conclude this uh, chapter. So we will continue starting with verse number 31 all the way through verse number 35. I will read it for context and then we will go into our lesson. Amen. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. And she conceived again and bare a son, and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, She said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. Amen. This is the word of the Lord, and if I might, for just for um, a title's sake, I would just like to read that last verse, number 35. And she conceived again, and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah, and she left bearing. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you're watching this to all of you. Um, I bring you greetings from Third Baptist Church, 582 East Ferry Avenue, uh, Detroit, Michigan, 48202. I bring you greetings from this historical district, from this historical church, and it is good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Amen. <clears throat> we thank God for you joining us. We pray, as always, that the Lord will be in charge and in control in your life. Uh, we have uh, the likelihood that we will be opening up services within the next two weeks. Uh, we thank God for that. But as we do so, we will make sure that everything that is done is decent and in order, and we will do it safely. Amen. So here we stand today, uh, once again coming from the pulpit uh, and reaching you via um, tape uh, via the internet and uh, via other avenues and we thank God for you that you have joined us. Amen. Uh, my name is uh, Pastor X. O. Roby Jr. I'm the senior pastor of Third Baptist Church and I bring you Jesus joy and tidings to all of you. Amen. But most of all I bid you uh, 
safety, uh, safe travel and all as you move forward at, at such a time as this. Um, you know, growing up, um, um, hitting an age of maturity and, and, and just living life as we know it, um, there is almost an assurity that um, you will deal with, we will deal with, I will deal with uh, some form of hatred, amen? Um, we can look across the landscape of what is going on in the United States right now where uh, for 11 days, people have been protesting uh, for Black Lives Matter and for uh, other various uh, causes that all have one, uh, one root, and that is the systematic hatred of uh, one race for the other, or the way that uh, the black people, the people, the African Americans are being, tr being treated in America. And it's tied to a hatred of us. I had the opportunity last night where I watched um, a documentary on the, uh, the murderers of nine um, members of the church in Charleston, South Carolina. I believe it was Emmanuel A.M.E. And, and, and that stemmed from hatred. And one of the things I want to make sure that we always understand is, is hatred started um, in the garden, amen? It has grown to a point where we have it today, and it is it, it is challenging. It is it is all encompassing because uh, wherever you look nowadays, you see hatred. Even as we look at uh, those that would be considered our lead leaders in this in this country, uh, all that we hear, all that we see, is the uh, ugly spew of of hatred upon. Um, pretty much anyone and everyone, amen? So as we deal with this hatred, um, I'm here today to help us to understand that um, hatred is, is of Satan. And because it is of Satan, it is of a spiritual nature, amen? And, and I'm not trying to give us a, a fix-all for it, but I'm just trying to turn to the Word of God where we can get some instruction, where we can get some direction, um, where we can get some uh, motivation, where we can get some, some rest as we move forward in this world. Because I want you to understand that um, hatred existed and it's gonna continue to exist. I had a class um, as I was working through for my uh, degree and it was called Racism and Equality. And, and if you were to even look at it, some of the animal kingdom, you will see this type of behavior uh, is involved in, in, in even the animal kingdom. So how do we, uh, what should we, how can we um, live with hatred? Because hatred is prevalent, uh, it's obvious, it's prevalent right now, and in the United States it's existed from its inception, amen? The treating of one person better than the other and so on and and it can't give us solace but it can give us hope because we see that all deal with hatred amen uh, some uh, more than others and, and and it impacts some more than it impacts others and and even as a black man I have dealt um, with hatred I mean recently um, you know, to be pulled over by a police officer, uh, to be uh, followed around uh, in various institutions, various businesses, uh, um, it's obvious. So how do we deal with hatred? Um, when I was studying for my lesson today, um, um, I got this definition for hatred, and it is to feel intense or dispassionate dislike uh, for someone. And uh, we all need to understand that not everybody's going to like us. As a matter of fact, there are going to be people that have an intense or a passionate dislike for us. And I say all that to say because we will see hatred in the midst of our lesson today. If we were to go in and remember uh, from the last time I preached, we were dealing with Jacob. And, and, and Jacob, um, he, 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 he had a love for Rachel. 
and, and the customs of the land where he was at was for the older daughter to be married off before the younger daughter could be married off. So, so um, Laban had a, a, a daughter um, by the name of Leah. He had a daughter by the name of Rachel. And if we were to look at the text previously from a couple, like I said, a couple weeks ago, um, it would paint a picture as if there was something wrong with Leah. Uh, it would have been because it spoke of her eye. It spoke of, uh, and, and if I need to go in and, and give you a better understanding, um, let me do so. It, must, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it said she had a lazy eye, amen? And, and we would believe to think that there was something wrong with her eye, but in all actuality, as I went in and I began to study, very likely her eyes were just a different color than her sister's eyes. So how could we get um, an idea of hatred? How could Leah get to a point where she felt that uh, not only Leah, but the Lord himself saw that she was hated? And, and, and how do we uh, uh, get to a point where we can see the true blessing of Leah in the midst of all that she went through, all that she had to go through, all that she tried to do for her husband to show him that she was enough for him, and, and yet and still she was hated. Amen? Our text today, if you look at verse number 31, it said, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, so we need to understand that the Lord saw it. So if the Lord saw it, everyone else around them saw it. If everyone else around them saw it, we can have an understanding on why uh, Leah functioned the way that she did over the next couple uh, verses to try to get the approval of her husband. Amen. Now, the text says, and the Lord saw that Leah was hated. And the Lord, now i got to make sure we get this point. When the Lord sees hatred, and I'm sure he sees hatred uh, in this world today, when he sees it, the Lord can give provisions to overcome the hatred. Amen. It's right here. It says, and the Lord, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So the Lord himself intervened in the fact that she was being hated on, and he allowed her to have children. And for Rachel, I'm, I'm going to make this, but for Rachel, Rachel was left barren. Now, I'm going to make this point. We cannot treat Rachel as if she's done something wrong. Amen? Um, if we look at all that has happened up to this point, it was actually her father that began this cycle. Now, we don't know, and I'm not going to try to predict how their home life was prior to her meeting uh, Jacob, but her being Rachel, but we need to understand that I don't want to treat her as if she's done something wrong. I want to just make sure that we understand in the midst of God's plan, there are some things that will happen to some people and won't happen to other people. And in the midst of that, a form of a hatred will become about because of possibly the favor. I always say that favor isn't fair. When people see the favor of God on you, you know, they can begin to be haters on you because they see all that God is doing to you. And even in, in, in the flip side, you can be a loving person of God, do everything that God has asked you to do, and look over here and you see someone that has not, not even a love of God, and yet and still you see favor upon them. So, we got to understand that there is a healing for hatred, and it's tied to how the Lord pretend or intends to intervene in that situation. The Lord intervened because he saw that Leah was hated, and he opened her womb, and Rachel was left bare. In verse, in, in, let's go, let's go over again. Verse number 32, and it says, that Leah conceived and bare a son. Now, I'm going to make this point because we're going to see a succession of sons being born, and for men or for families of this time in the Bible, the son was the not saying that girls were not important, but when a man had a son, he was looked upon as, as being strong. Not only that, but that son brought about almost a sense of wealth because 
the son was, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the son was able to carry on that name to be the progenitor of that father and continue in the ways of the father, learn of the father, and because of that, when Leah was able to have a son initially, you would have, and she was at a point where she felt that she was doing more than her sister because she gave him something that she could not give him. Amen? So, in the midst of her feeling hated, there was healing in the fact that the Lord allowed her to have a son. Amen? Not only that, but his name, Reuben, his name means, Behold a son. Verse number 32, it says, And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called him Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction or my misery. The Lord has looked upon my affliction, my misery. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. Now, I got to deal with this. You can't make someone love you. Amen? Um, if, if, if we ever had a perfect example, um, it is Jesus Christ. Um, in the midst of all that he did, things that at that point had not been done and things that have not been done since, he was still hated. Amen? He was not loved. There are people even today that do not love him. They hate him. And we need to get to an understanding and to a point where we understand if they hated Christ, then who are we to complain when we are being hated? Not only that, but there, you look, when you run into someone that hates you, you should distance yourself from them and you should quit focusing on them because the hatred that they have for you could very likely impact you where you have hatred for them and it only continues to grow to a point, a boiling point where it messes you up because you refuse to get over someone that you cannot change. Amen? So, there's a healing for hatred and then we're looking for love. I don't, and it's challenging because when we look for love, and that's what, uh, what, what, what we see in this text, Leah was looking for love from her husband. Now, there was hatred. The Lord saw the hatred, and because he saw the hatred, he allowed her womb to be open, and he allowed Rachel to be barren, and she was blessed with the ability to have this first son for Jacob, Reuben, and she said, Behold, I have had a son, and that still was not good enough for her because all she wanted was the love of her husband. At some point, we need to move beyond trying to please people. We need to move beyond trying to get people to, to, to love us for who we are. They just probably will never appreciate, understand, and love us. And because of that, we need to move on and just do it for the Lord. Amen? Right there it says, And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely... The Lord have looked upon my affliction. Now, I got to make that point because we need to understand that God looks upon our affliction. God looks upon our situation. God can overcome. Look, in our in the midst of our situation, God can allow us to overcome anything. And because the Lord can allow us to overcome anything, should we not be focused on what the Lord can do? Amen. So. When we are looking for love, that's the second point. When we are looking for love, we need to be focused on the love of God. Amen? She's going to get it. I'm going to show you. She's going to get it. She doesn't have it right now, but she is going to get it. So we're looking for love. Verse number 33. So there's a healing for hatred, and we're looking for love. And verse number 33 says, And she conceived again and bare a son. How blessed. When we look at verses 31 through verse number 35, how blessed, how blessed do we really understand that Leah was? She, look, she is going to give Jacob something that even in the midst of all the love that he had for Rachel, she could not give him up to this point, amen? She could not do it. 
And it was all tied to the actions of the Lord because the Lord allowed her womb to be opened. Not only that, he shut or he closed or he made Rachel barren. And this is tied to also, I've got to make this point, this is tied to the providence of God because, let's go back. What if Leah would have been the sister that Jacob saw as he entered into the city? as opposed to Rachel coming to get the, 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 the animal's water, it was Leah. How would this situation have changed? Because then Leah was naturally the older sister, and I'm one to believe by how I've studied this lesson and how I've done my word study that Leah was not an ugly woman because she was able to pass for Rachel on her wedding night to Jacob to a point where Jacob was not able to tell the difference until the morning. So that being said, the providence of God is where we have to attribute all that is happening in the midst of this situation or these circumstances as we see them. Well, why is that important, Pastor Roby? Well, that's important because we've got to understand that even in the midst of what we're going through, the providence of God is involved, and because of that, we should be steadfast, unmovable in everything that the Lord brings to us and puts us through. If he brings it to us, he can take us through. Amen? So, she's looking for love. Not only that, but she does not receive what she was looking for from her husband. Now, we already see that she has received the favor, the grace of God, because the Lord has allowed her to do something that her sister could not do. Not only that, but in the first, in verse number 31, we see where her sister can't do it. Verse number 32, we see the Lord, where the Lord has blessed her with Reuben. And verse number 33, we see where the Lord has heard her and blessed her with Simeon. Amen. So, in the midst of being hated, we've got to understand that the Lord not only looks on our situation, but he hears us in the midst of our situation. And not only that, because you got to get this, it says, verse number 31, it says, and the Lord saw. So not only did the Lord see, the Lord looked upon her situation, but the Lord also heard her plea, heard her situation, heard what other people were saying, and he was able to bless her. Remember, the Lord sees your situation. Not only that, you may think he does not see it. He can also hear your situation. Well, how does the Lord hear you? Because you got to pray and praise. Amen. So, we're looking for love. And when we're in the midst of hatred, we've got to understand that the Lord hears us. All of these people we see protesting right now, the, the, the peaceful protesting, and even those that are, are a little bit off the hook and off the chain with some of the things that they're doing, uh, uh, we're frustrated, uh, we're, we're hurt uh, that, that we feel like we're, not, we're less of a man. We're, we're almost back to, to 200, 300 years ago where we're being cart brought in, in, in on boats and, and marched up and to be to be put in front of uh, of these men that would purchase us and buy us and we're treated less than men. So how can they expect us to come in and function like a normal U.S. American citizen when we don't function under the same rights as other people because of the privileges that they have and we are not afforded? Thank you, Lord. So in the midst of hatred, we've got to understand that the Lord sees us and the Lord hears us. And when we, we, when we can get that, when we can understand that, then we can turn to the Lord and use those things that he has given us to be prosperous. Amen? I, I can feel what, what Leah is going through. Amen? But I've got to also make the point that in the midst of what she's going through, hear this, she has got to see the fact that she is blessed. In the midst of what we're going through, as a people, we have got to see that we are blessed in the eyes of the Lord because he sees all, he knows all, he hears all, and ultimately God is in charge and our day will come. Thank you, Lord. Verse number 33. 
23, and she conceived again and bare a son and said, because the Lord hath heard, I was hated. Now remember, verse number 31, it says, when the Lord saw that Leah was hated. Now she is coming to the conclusion that the Lord hath heard that she was hated. And it's right there in verse number 33. It says, he hath therefore given me this son also, third son, and she called his name Simeon, which means heard. Amen? So, up to this point, she's had three boys. The first boy's name was, am I one? I'm one ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So the first son, his name was Reuben. His name's Behold a Son. The second name was Simeon. It means that he or she was heard of the Lord. Now, I want to make sure you understand this. In these verses 32 and verse number 33, we see the Lord acting on her behalf because he heard her and he saw her. Amen? He saw that she was hated, and he heard that she was hated. So because of that, he blessed her with Reuben, Reuben, uh, Reuben behold a son, and she blessed her with Simeon, or in other words, her. So, behold a son and her, those two names, amen? Because the Lord was looking, and the Lord was listening. The Lord is always looking, and always listening on our circumstances, amen? We have got to learn that God sees us and God hears us. Thank you. And, and i got to make this point. The 12 tribes, the 12 Hebrew tribes, they were not a mistake of God. As a matter of fact, they are in order the way that God designed them because that order is important. So we see where Reuben is the oldest brother, amen? And then we see where Simeon is the second in charge. And then look, it's right there in verse number 34. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, now, this, and look, she's still trying to get her husband a lover. Now this time will my husband be joined unto me. Because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. Now, Levi's name means to be joined to. So up to this point, she has had three boys, Reuben, Simeon, and Levi. Now, each of, and we'll see as we go through uh, the book of Genesis, the importance of each of these sons and the order that God put them in. Amen? And the order is important, just as important as the fact that he allowed Leah to have these boys. Amen? The oldest daughter had the first four sons over Rachel, and this is important, and we'll see the importance of it, because how things work their ways out, work their way out, and, and, and I want to make sure we don't lose focus of the relationship that Abraham had with Ish, Ishmael, and Isaac, the relationship Isaac had with Esau and Jacob, and the relationship that we're going to see between Jacob and all of his sons and his daughter. And it's important because each relationship is impacted by how that father had a relationship with his father. Amen. And I've explained that in some of our sermons before as we walk through between the relationship with uh, Abraham and Isaac because remember Ishmael was, uh, was the oldest and Ishmael and his mother were ran off because the promise that the Lord had for Abraham and his seed was actually going through Isaac, the promise, as opposed to Ishmael, the son that was given because they did not have the patience to wait for the Lord. Thank you. So, there's a healing for hatred. There's looking for a look for love, and then there's a hearing for hatred. So not only does the Lord see hatred, but the Lord also hears hatred. Verse number 34, and she conceived again, and bare a son, and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. So, it is an intent to 
attend on. In other words, when she had Levi, her intent was that her husband would join to her. Very, and, and if you were to go into to, to, uh, chapter number 30, you will see where there was a jostling between these two sisters on who would be with Jacob. There was a, 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 a inner struggle between these two sisters to please this man, Jacob, for the love that he had to give. Amen? And we've got to understand that you can't make someone love you. Because you can't make someone love you, very likely when you are in the midst of trying, you are going to bring yourself into contention with someone else. Amen? So, it is an intent. Her intent in having these boys, because remember, first the Lord saw, and then the Lord heard, and now it says that, right there, she said, this time will my husband be joined unto me because, purpose cause, I have three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. So, there was healing for hatred. There was looking for love. There was healing for the hatred. And then there was an intent that she had because she, look, she loved Jacob. She being lady. She loved Jacob. Now, Rachel loved Jacob also. And when you see this inner turmoil of one man and two wives and two handmaids, you will begin to understand why uh, we have a, 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 a biblically where the Lord wants us to have one wife. Amen? Because of all of the inner turmoil that having multiple wives or multiple husbands, all these different ways people live, the inner turmoil that it brings about because we see the pain that's caused by it. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. Now all the way up to this point, Leah, Leah was, was, was trying to please her husband. Amen? I need y'all to get this. When we move beyond trying to please others, remember I'm talking about love. She was trying to get her husband love. And when we understand that we need to focus on God, when we focus on God, all things fall in order. Verse number 35. And it says, And she conceived again and bare a son. Now look at what she said. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. In the midst of what you're going through right now, in the midst of the circumstances in your life, perhaps you're in a Rachel Leah situation in your life. You're torn or between two or, or two things are pulling you in two separate directions or you're trying to make someone love you that will not love you. I want you to focus on one thing, not them. I want you to focus on praising the Lord. Look, it's right there. It says, and she conceived again and bare a son and she said, now will I praise the Lord. When we can get to a point where the Lord is our focus, we already know that God sees us, and we already know that God hears us. Imagine how God will work in our situation when the Lord sees that we praise Him, and the Lord hears that we praise Him. Amen? Don't miss this, because this is the beginning of some normalcy. Some, some, some sense of, of, of relevancy. Uh, this is the beginning of Leah beginning to understand that she does not have to compete with her sister for the love of God. Amen? God loves us all. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, I'm going to make this point because you need to understand that everything that you are going through Everything that you've been through, it's all tied to the plan of God. As we see Leah, and she has this fourth son, she named him Judah. 
It means praise. Amen. His name means praise. And what it's saying is, is that she has moved beyond the hatred. She's moved beyond the hurt. She's moved beyond all the things that her husband, her sister can say, do to her. And she's completely and totally focused on the Lord. Now, it's important that we understand that we get to this point as we live our lives. Because when we can learn to praise God, we can be a blessing to others. Amen? Well, how can we be a blessing to others? Because this very son, Judah, is the lineage where we see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, coming. Now, as you read the Bible, you would, you would go in and say, well, why wouldn't the lineage of Christ come through Rachel? Because she was the most loved. No. In the midst of God's plan, God determined that Leah would go with that what she went through, that she would have Reuben, she would have Simeon, she would have Levi, and she would have Judah. And from this seed, Judah, Judah being the progenitor, we would see where we go generation all the way down, and we see a man named Jesus. Amen? And if you want a true understanding of love, all that you need to do is focus on Jesus Christ. Amen? Even as he was on an old rugged Roman cross, and they were ridiculing him, they were laughing at him, he had been beaten all night long, he was able to profoundly, with all power, say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We would not have Christ if not for Leah. We would not have Christ if not for Jacob. We would not have Christ if not for Rachel. We have Jesus Christ because the ultimate working power and providence of God. Whatever you're going through, just stay focused on praising God. And as you praise God, all things will work out. Amen? He got up on, he being Jesus Christ, got up on the third day morning with all power. It is that power that I proclaim over whatever you're going through right now. Yes, times are challenging, but God is still in charge. God is still in control. And if we can just learn to praise the Lord, if we can just learn to stay focused on God, if we can get over the hatred, if we can get over the pain, all the things that we are doing in life, and if we can just praise God, if we can just judo our way through, the Lord will hear us, the Lord will see us, and the Lord will deliver us. Well, how do I know? Because we have Jesus Christ. He is my Savior. I accept, believe, and confess that he's the Son of God, that he died on this earth, he died on Calvary, he got up on third day morning with all power. If you can say the same, then you are saved because of Jesus Christ. We don't know how this thing will work out, but I guarantee you that God will receive all of the glory. I thank God for you. I love you. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you. We love you. Father, we ask that you would uh, take this word and feed us, Lord. That you would take this word, Father, and you would guide us in the direction you would have us to go, Lord. Lord, move us beyond hatred. Help us to understand, Lord, that you see us, Lord, and that you hear us, Lord. And help us, Lord, from moving from personal to moving to praise, Lord. Help us that we might praise you. I thank you, Lord. I love you. This is my prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for you that you were able to join us today. I pray that you are blessed by this lesson. Not only that, but I pray that you take this lesson and you share it with someone else. That you share with someone else that they need only learn how to praise God. And in the midst of God's praise, it might not work out the way that you want it, but it will work out the way that God has planned and intended. Amen. We thank God for you. We love you. Be safe. And uh, as soon as we open, we invite you to come and worship with us. 582 East Ferry Avenue, uh, 3rd Baptist Church. Once again, I'm Pastor XO Roby, and I thank God for you joining me today. Bless you.